Good morning, everyone, and thanks again for, for joining us on our December webinar for the Retail Coach, uh, Small Town Hospitality a q and A session with Cobblestone Hotel. Before we get started, there's just a, a couple of housekeeping notes um, just for you to, to make note of. This session is being recorded. Um, we will be sure to, once we finish up here, get the link sent out to you, all the attendees, so you can have it, uh, refer back to it, or, or share it with any of your colleagues. Um, if there's anything that we hit on that you want to touch base again, so just so you know that you will get a link after the fact. Um, and this is an open Q&A session. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have some good conversation here. But on your control panel for the GoToWebinar, there should be a tab for questions. So please feel free to submit those to us throughout the webinar. Um, we may not get to all of the questions, but if you do submit it, we'll try our best to follow up after the fact. And then, of course, we'll have our contact information to follow up individually as well as we uh, go through this and talk about smaller communities um, and the, you know, the need for, for hotels and, you know, this key brand that is, is finding a way to, to be very successful in those brands. So without uh, any, any further uh, delay, um, my name is Charles Parker. I'm a project director here at The Retail Coach. And I'm joined this morning uh, by Brian Wilgerney, the CEO of Cobblestone Hotels. Good morning, Brian, and, and thanks for joining us. Uh, excuse me. Good morning. I'm happy to happy to do it. I always like to talk hotels. So to anybody that's willing to listen. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. And I, I know we're both very excited about this. And leading up to it, we've we've kind of talked about how we're both the, the type to maybe go down the rabbit hole and talk about you know cool topics for extended periods of time. But we're going to try to keep it to about 25 or, or 30 minutes. Um, we are about a week from Christmas. It's the end of the year. I know a lot of folks have a lot going on, so we do appreciate your time. Um, but that being said, you know, if we do strike a chord with you, please feel free to, to reach out to either one of us um, after this. Like, so we both can talk about um, these kinds of details uh, in depth. So please feel free to reach out afterwards. So before we get started, just a little bit uh, about the retail coach for those who aren't familiar with us. Uh, we are a national consulting firm that specializes in, in retail market analysis and recruitment strategies for municipalities. And over the last 20 years, uh, we've worked with over 500 communities across more than 35 states, um, working to help drive retail development. And when we say retail, we kind of use that as, as a broad term that, that covers a lot of concepts. We are uh, obviously going after uh, to recruit the traditional retail type stores, but we also work closely with restaurants and experience concepts, um, breweries even. And then, of course, you know, a part of, of all that type of commercial and retail development and redevelopment becomes <clears throat> hotels. So we, we get the luxury of working with, with guys like Brian from time to time, figuring out how hotels fit into the ultimate uh, planning of redevelopment for economic development. So that's a little bit about uh, the retail coach. Um, Brian, I kind of leave, leave the floor to you to kind of introduce, you know, Cobblestone Hotel. Tell us a little bit about where you guys started and kind of what's going on with you. Sure, sure. So, uh, again, thanks for having us on. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always good to get us out there. But um, we, we've been in the industry for over 20 years um, as hotel owners, operators. Uh, my family is prim primarily, I work with my family and we were franchisees back in the day. Um, and in 2008, we decided to come up with, with cobblestone. And what it was, was an, an answer to, to small communities looking for a hotel. And we always thought every, every community needs a hotel. It's just how many rooms does it need? Is it two or is it a hundred? Um, and we went through all the brands that were out there and tried to find a mid scale brand that would do 30 rooms. And that's what we could do back in, in eight and nine and, and things like that. And, um, we couldn't find anything except for economy on any of the brands that were out there that would put their flag on it. So we decided to come up, come up with our own brand. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of how we started it. Uh, we're headquartered in Eden, Wisconsin. Um, again, 08 was the first one in Clintonville, Wisconsin, which we actually personally own. And then we are now at 150 open and under construction. Uh, we did do a small acquisition in there with a brand called Key West. Um, and also Centerstone that added about 25 locations to us, and those are mostly in the uh, mostly in the south. Um, so that's uh, that's right. a quick 30,000 foot view of us. So. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it's interesting because you, you said you started back back in 08. Um, you know, yep. talking about trends, that's not a, a good trend for for many in commercial development, and that's when you guys kind of sprouted. 
we we did, and obviously during that time, people would say, "How are you doing?" I said, "Well, you know, we're 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 still alive, which is a lot better than a, a lot of people were doing." But what it allowed us to do is we looked at the map in the United States, and not everybody was in a recession during that time. So we looked at some key states that I don't want to say they were recession proof, but we're doing better than better than others, and that's where we went to. And, and primarily at that time, it was Nebraska and Iowa. Um, where we in North Dakota, where we really had a lot of growth during those years. Um, and the one thing, sorry, Charles, can I ask you to back up just for a second? I, I know we had that sure. um, on the slide. Um, so there, there's more to us just to, you know, let people know who we are. We're not just a small hotel brand. So we have some of these other companies. We're also a developer, uh, general contractor. We do all our own FF and E supply if needed. Um, and we do have 65 employees that work for us under the corporate level, and then we manage uh, over uh, 1,200 on, on hotels that we manage under the management division. So just wanted to do a quick quick shot on that. So, Yeah, absolutely. I know we're going we're to talk a little bit more about the, your guys' scope and, and how you manage and do kind of the, the full suite of development, which I think really makes you guys a, yep. an interesting player in, in the market. Um, but but overall, we kind of talked about how you, you sprouted, sprouted um, during the recession, and you know there are some some general trends. But you guys have seemed to to find a way to to really, I guess, navigate the market in, in a different way and find those kind of categories where you can be successful. And you kind of have a gear towards towards smaller communities. Is is there anything about smaller communities that that you feel that you know has kind of helped you be most successful, or kind of why, why smaller communities? Is that just because it was a, a niche that was open in the market? Well, we're really step back, and this isn't, and, and, and nothing against the larger communities and bigger cities, but uh, we were doing, my family did a, a 120 room hotel in a major metro market, and it took us three years to get it done. And just for the luxury of being able to build in that community, and we, we just really became frustrated with it. And our, our original, my family's original um, uh, move into the hospitality business, whether it was with a small brand called American, which is um, was based out of Minnesota, now owned by Wyndham, where where we did a lot of small communities, and it was it was really nice to sit down and you got to meet the mayor, and you got to meet the city council, and you you really got in there and got to meet the real people um, that were were part of the community. Where you're working in larger communities, you're just a number, and we we just Decided after all that, we went went back to we went back to our roots of you know where are we gonna where are we gonna meet you know the, the small town America and really that's to me it's the heart of America and it, it it's been it's been great and that's really you know now we're moving into some larger communities 100 200 thousand people but still not the major metro markets so. right and that's something that we talk with with our clients a bunch is that there is a value to meeting the mayor, the city manager, the folks that, you know, if something does go wrong in terms of the development hurdle, folks you're ultimately going to have to talk to and work with. And, and it sounds like there may be a value to kind of knowing those guys on the front end. So when something does kind of get off track, you already, you've already met those guys. You can talk to them and say, hey, you know, how do we get this fixed? How do we move on? And it sounds like that's probably become a part of kind of your strategy and what's kind of drew you guys to smaller communities. It, it has, and, and you know, I'm 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 from a small community, and I, we we put a hotel in, in in my hometown about three and a half years ago, and it was great. You know, it was the you know the hometown boy comes back and just really had a lot of fun with it. But that's that's the vibe you get from a lot of the small communities of you, you know, and especially if they've been looking for a hotel for years. We're, we're and not mm -hmm. that we're the only option, but we're we're probably the best fit. And you know, it's 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 great to sit down and 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 get some of these things that they want. And I'm sure you've seen this in other retail um, that you've done in small communities that they've, they've wanted it. It's just lining up the right people to get it put together. Right. Yeah. It takes a lot of stars to align for, for development. And, but a big piece of that is, is finding the right partnership like, like we've hit on. Um, so kind of looking forward, I guess, do you have a, a target number of, of units to, to build out each year? Is it dependent on, on certain things? What what do you all look for in terms of, you know, what's next for you guys? Are, how many hotels are you looking to, you know, build, convert, um, anything like that? Well, this year, Cobblestone, which is primarily new build, we will add, we're going to be right around 20 locations. Um, might be a little more than that. I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. On the conversion side, with our conversion brand, which is Borders, uh, Centerstone, and Key West, I think we're going to add about eight there. 
Um, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, new development takes a, a lot more work than it does. Now, I shouldn't say work. It takes more time um, to, to do a ground up new build than it does on the conversion side. So um, that's where if I, you know, we, we have six full time development people that and I do a little bit of development on the side. Plus, you know, oversee the company, um, it, you know, it. it some of them we've been working on deals that we're going to be into for four years. I have one in Wisconsin. If if I can if I can get it before its fifth year of development, I'll be happy. Some of them come together <laughs> in six months. It's just it's just yeah. development. So, but it as far as what we can handle, it, yeah, as far as what we can handle, it depends on what you're looking for. And I think that gets into all the pieces of what we do. If we're doing everything, um, you know, we can do fifteen to twenty a year. If somebody else is developing it. That it's really kind of unlimited for us. So we do have this year a couple deals that are coming that we're not the developer or builder, and that you know we're just the franchise or maybe managing it. So those are again, those are a lot easier to get through the pipeline if somebody else is doing some of those pieces. And we're always happy to partner with groups too that want to do their own development and things like that. So. Yeah, well, uh, that's kind of a, a nice segue um, to kind of talk about what makes you guys so neat. I know you have, you know, this really unique approach and are, are super flexible in terms of how to operate, how to ultimately, you know, end of the day, get to a ribbon cutting at, at a hotel. So you know, kind of talk, talk a little bit about if you can, kind of the beginning to end and kind of each phase and, and how you guys kind of attack all those pieces to, to ultimate development and opening up a hotel. Sure. So cobblestone is what everybody recognizes, which I think was on one of the, the second slide um, of the different companies that we have. So we have cobblestone, which is the franchise, or we have the brands under cobblestone. And then we have WHG, which is a management company, which was really the original company that we had. Uh, we we're more in the family owned operated management business. We manage about 80 hotels right now um, out of, and most of them are cobblestone properties. Out of the out of the uh, 150 that are out there, we're about 80 of them. And then we're we have a company called Brymark, which is a developer, general contractor. Uh, we do all the FF and E supply. So we are one of the only companies, and and those are subsidiaries um, or wholly owned companies that that we control too. But we're one of the only companies out there in the hotel industry that can do everything for you. We can do the development. We'll build it, we'll supply all the FF and E, we'll train everybody, open it, and manage it for you. Now, we, you don't have to use all of those pieces, we just have them all available to you. The only thing we cannot do, and I think we're getting in this little, we'll get into this a little later, is market research, market feasibility. Other than that, we can, we can help you with financing, we can help you put investment groups together. We're really kind of a one-stop shop, it's just depending on how involved or not involved you want to be. Right, and I think that's such a, a unique solution because I know in, in markets and clients that, that we've worked with trying to get a hotel, you know, you, you get a flag and that's just, you know, one piece of it. Um, and then you get to go find the developer to build it. And then you have to go find a, a management group to, to manage it and, you know, everything in between. Whereas, like I said, you're kind of a one-stop shop. And I would imagine that's why you're so successful in these smaller communities that you have access and the ability to kind of do a to Z development operation and, and, and getting it done. I think that's just a, a super interesting way to approach it. Right, and it, it doesn't seem like it's that much, but you said it perfectly. It, it, it's gonna take four to five different groups to do what we can do all under one roof. And I, I think especially when you're dealing with um, investors or communities that have never done it before, it, it, I, I can sit here now and say it's, it's not that difficult because we've done it a lot, but if you are starting from scratch, you can only Google so much to figure out how to put all this stuff together. And, and you're right, the other brands, nothing against them, but you know they're gonna they're gonna send you a franchise salesperson, and that person's mm-hmm. then gonna have to find you a developer and um, somebody that can do the construction. Usually, the FF and E is supplied you know, by another company, so it's it's a lot of coordinating. You're, you're bringing four to five different companies at the table at one time, where we can bring in one of our people. To, to coordinate that all as a one-stop shop. Right. So. right. And at the same time, I, I don't want to oversimplify it because it's not like someone can just call you and say, hey, 
we'd love to have a hotel right here. You guys can just take care of the rest, right? There's, you know, if you do kind of the, the full suite, there's, you know, investment and other pieces that you have to find local partners, I would imagine, to make those kinds of deals work. Correct. And there are only six development people and it's still a big country. So yes, we, we probably can't, we're not going to be able to hit everything, but when we get, when we get a community that has interest, then we, you know, first, you know, get on the phone and say, hey, what, you know, what point are you at? Is it just a thought today or have you been looking at this for five years? And again, I know we'll get into the market feasibility, but that's, that's a, that's a key piece um, to, to even starting, you know, as far as, um, you know, laying out the, the plan. So. Yeah, well, let's just uh, since we're since we're kind of there, let's let's kind of jump into it with you know evaluating a market. Um, you know what what are kind of the, the first steps to look at? You know what makes a, a good hotel site? Um, how do you look into hey this would be a good community and this would be a good particular site for for any hotel? I wish I had that answer for you, and and I've been doing this <laughs> over over twenty years and. There are some communities that I, you, you know, the, the hotel got done, um, and, and 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 a lot of these small small communities are, are done as a local investment for the for the for the community. Not that the investors don't want to return, but some of them just say that the, the community needs it. Um, we may not make a ton of money, but it it gets people in the community. It, it keeps them spending money, that kind of thing. But. You know, they're, they're all different. We are in communities of less than 500 people. Now, there are extenuating circumstances why that works. One that comes to mind is Marquette, Iowa. Um, I was sitting in my house one Sunday, and this, the city administrator at the time now, his name's Dean Hilgerson, good friend of ours, but got this email. I said, you know, this, this guy's crazy. There's only 500 people here. Well, then what I realized, it was, it was across the river from Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, which is a larger community, but also sat next to a riverboat casino. And was also on this, um, you know, on this route that in the summer people travel and, and really a great spot. The place has been open about seven years and, 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 and really does well. The investors are happy. And so, you know, that's, that's why it's not a population. It's definitely traffic flow. It's, you know, and that's where the market study, we rely on that a lot too, because a lot of these communities we're not familiar with. So until there's a market study for us to come in there and say, hey, I mean, and sometimes we'll make a visit just to get a, you know, again, the 30,000 foot view, but we really push towards that, you know, for that market study to get us the data that, and they'll come into the community and, and, and talk to the demand generators and, and really what they need to do is figure out if you don't have a hotel in your community, how many people are coming to your community and leaving because there's no place to stay. And that's really where the, where the, I don't want to say magic happens, but that's where, you know, we really rely on those people to, to give us that information. So. Right. And how do you document, you know, your regional draw for why are folks coming to town and what are they doing? Is it, you know, a historic aspect? Um, is there like said, a riverboat casino nearby on, on that peak? Um, I know when we talk about analytics, most people are probably familiar with star reports, you know, things like occupancy rates, nightly rates, um, I would imagine that most of the markets that you you are evaluating don't have existing hotels to really evaluate. So those star reports probably you know aren't great because there's nothing really to evaluate. So are that part of your process? Do you look at surrounding areas and how the other areas are doing in terms of you know occupancy rates and daily rates? And are there certain benchmarks that you know yes this is a good rate or a bad rate or anything like that? Well, and I'll give that political answer to you here for that. But yes, all the markets, they, I, I, I shouldn't say, well, I think most of them that I've seen in most of the feasibility studies that have been done, you know, say you pick town X and there isn't a hotel for 20 miles. They will still try to do an overview of what is happening in that surrounding 20, 30, 40 miles to figure out where those people are going. And then to answer your question, as far as, you know, you really need to look at what the response is. And the response for STR is, are all the hotels that responded. So then you really have to look at, you know, what property it is, uh, what, what flag it is, how old it is, um, before you can really boil down to what the occupancies and rates are and things like that. And that's my political answer. I know we've talked about this as a franchisor. I don't get to, you know, sit in a webinar and say, Hey, if you hit, if you, if you, if your response is, you know, X amount and it's this, it's a slam dunk. I'm, unfortunately I'm governed by the FTC and they, they, which is fine. 
um, th then I'm not held to any any certain returns and things like that. But every market's going to be different when you look at some of that data. I can I I can sit down and I would love to tell you what we look at when we're looking at at the markets, but um, just because the occupancy and ADRs are low doesn't mean it's it's a bad market. It just it may mean that people are still driving further than that to get to what they want for as far as lodging choices. So it sounds like if someone's had one of these star reports done and you know they kind of get their results and you know they're not exactly what they want and they aren't you know perfect pretty numbers, it doesn't necessarily mean that it rules out their opportunity to get a hotel. No, and then you have to look at, so it's always the famous line of, you know, the, the industry isn't, the hotel industry isn't really necessarily overbuilt, it's under demolished in some cases. So, you know, there's, there's some, you know, there's some, there's some tired stuff out there that, you know, hotels rarely close, they just, you know, if, if somebody doesn't come in and do a major refurb, they just kind of fall down the food chain. And Sure. The market that we we were you know we introduced ourselves to each other. That market actually had a couple of hotels that'll report. Then we might need to go out maybe only ten miles. That'll give you that community in particular that um, that would give you a little more data closer to home. Some of them you might have to go out a little further. So, gotcha. so but to answer your question, yes, that that doesn't that doesn't mean that it will preclude you from getting a hotel. You just have to get with the with the study people and dig a little deeper. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know when we're talking about hotel analytics, most people are, are probably familiar with occupancy rates, you know, nightly rates, things like that. Um, but in our conversation leading up to this, you know, you talked a little bit about RevPAR, and I think that may be a new term for for some folks. Can you can you talk up a little bit about what that is and kind of what that signifies? Sure. So uh, RevPAR is revenue per available room, whether it's sold or not. I'll be honest, that's what we look at more. Um, and there's there's a couple different types of operators out there. There's some that are occupancy, there's some that are rate. I'm more of a rate integrity person. I would rather have higher ADR than higher occupancy. But again, it's it's all on it's all on the operator that you have. Um, so we really look at what the rev par number is and then kind of back into is that enough? And it, we look at the rev par number as to if if Worst case scenario, if that's what it's going to be, if we built a hotel, will that get us to a break even or not? And and if it does, then to us, as long as there's not a lot of supply in that immediate area, that that kind of gets us a going of, you know, hey, then does it need a does it need a brand new product? But again, my philosophy, not necessarily how everybody's going to do it. And I'm not exactly the expert. I'm just a small franchisor out there, but that's kind of how we've always operated. Well, sure. It's just like any other developer looking at cap rates or anything else. It's it's all based on you know what their strategies are and, and what they need to make like project ultimately pencil. Correct. And then to back up on the star report, just so people understand, if if we were in you know take if we were in Chicago, I could go into a suburb and pick four or five hotels that were within less than a mile of me, and I could get real data. And you know, if you put a hotel there, that if whatever. Um, whatever percentage you expect to pick up that you know you, you have real numbers there when you come to these smaller communities it's just not that easy and no matter what you do you're, you're you're pioneering a little bit because even though you can try to gauge some of the leakage you're not you're not sure you're going to get a hundred percent of that right it's, it's an exact science and an art and that's what what we see in whether it's hotels or a quick serve restaurant or even a sea store it's you know when these smaller more secondary tertiary markets, you have to kind of figure out what the real story is and kind of piecemeal your data together to ultimately get to, all right, this is our final conclusion. This is why we think, you know, a hotel or a restaurant would be successful there. Well, and one thing I'd add on that is where we've seen some hotels that we've done in smaller communities that have, haven't been as successful, it's because they don't have the food piece. Um, that, that, that's, a, that's a big thing. So, if you think the hotel is going to bring the food, that, that to me that's a little risky. So you might want to make sure if you're going to do both of those that they kind of line up at the same time, because if people are there for the evening, they're going to want some fast food options and some sit down options. Right. So somebody may need to kind of a line of approach rather than one versus the other first, and then go after. Maybe you should go after both kind of the same time, and you know go after a larger district or parcel, saying, hey, we want this to be 
you know, uh, for overnight travelers to coincide with our, our nearby historic park or, you know, with the theme park down the road. Correct. So I know you mentioned a few minutes ago that something that's, you know, analytics and star reports and feasibility studies, or I guess feasibility studies themselves, are not something you guys can do um, in-house. Um, is that, you know, a legal thing? What What's the story behind that? That is, so we're not allowed to give any earnings claims or projections, things like that. So when it comes to the feasibility, they will, um, typically they'll even put performers in for you to help with financing and things like that. That's one piece we're not allowed to do. Um, would love to, but um, this is where we're uh, um, governed by the by the FTC. So um that is the only piece we we can work with the financing institutions and discuss it and, and the development side we're just not allowed to talk about it with investors so that's one thing that has to be completely separate from us if i could i'd love to have a, a feasibility piece and tell everybody that we're a complete one-stop shop but that's something that ha has to be independent and they'll come in um you know typically most of them will come in spend a couple days in the community and really try to dig and and uh you know see what the the community is all about but um that that that's something before any project really takes off you're going to need that piece right but uh, even even so i'm sure there are partners that you have that you can recommend to, to anyone looking to maybe take the first step um to kind of start to do their due diligence for potential potential partners to execute a feasibility study um, i know we've worked with a, a few of those independent firms in the past to kind of get that ball moving as well Sure, and we can. I don't want to say we'll, we'll direct you, but there's, there's. Uh, what we would do is, is let you know some of the people that have done studies for cobblestones, and what, what you need is somebody that really. Uh, I hate to keep picking on Chicago. And there's nothing wrong with Chicago, but if you're <laughs> used to doing fe feasibility studies for a city like Chicago, and that's all you've done, <laughs> that person is not to, not to label them, but they're going to go to small town USA and just go, okay, this this doesn't make any sense. So I think you need to find the, the, the groups that have done it, have the experience of, of digging. It's not, and I think the larger communities, it's, it's more just analytics than it is, you know, sitting down, you know, they'll come in, sit down with the chamber and the city and, and employers and, and it really get deep into the community. And, and, and a lot of them will still talk after the fact. So if the city's struggling with, trying to get a hotel development going, you know, they'll, they'll come in and, and they'll keep, you know, they, they want, they want to see it done because their success is, Hey, you know, we got this hotel put together in this community and, and, and whatnot. So. Gotcha. So uh, I know we've got a few questions that have, that have come in. That I kind of want to get to before we wrap this up. Um, first one talks about kind of size of your new construction hotel. How, how big uh, do you guys aim for a new construction hotel? Um, I, I guess can I add on to that both in number of keys, you know, how many rooms, and then like from a, a real estate perspective, how big of a parcel do you guys need to to make it all fit? Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think I mentioned in the beginning, like you know, thirty room hotels. Unfortunately, with the cost of construction from oh eight, nine, and ten, uh, it does not allow you to build a, a thirty room hotel today. Um, so right now, we're kind of recommending at least forty five rooms, if not closer to fifty. And I know that's a big jump, but the the the, the the costs just aren't going down yet um so that and again the the feasibility people so what will happen with some of the feasibility people they'll come to us and say okay what's the cost of development in this town we'll give them a construction development say here here's what that and then they'll back into you know what the debt piece is and, and things like that the largest um it's it, it's really as big as you want to go i mean we're happy to build a 300 room cobblestone if it, if the market um if if the market can support it, the largest cobblestone that we've done to date is 72 rooms, I believe. We have experience of building larger hotels. Just that's that's the biggest that the cobblestones have been. And then as far as um, as far as land piece, on average, you're looking at two to two and a half acres usually. It can be less than that gotcha. if it's in a downtown where there's there's shared parking and things like that. We've done it on less than a you know a half an acre in some of the downtown communities, but parking wasn't included with, with that. So. Okay. And we had another question come in about historic hotels. Um, is that something you guys work with? Um, you know, I guess that's probably, you know, is that a conversion? Have y'all done a conversion with the historic hotel or do y'all kind of try to fit in with the historic district of downtown? We 
I, as far as us and our companies, we only do new builds. Um, and we are happy. So we're working with a group in Lorain, Ohio, that they're doing a historic, they re, we're revitalizing a historic hotel. Happy to work with them. We, we can provide FF&E. We can help with the development. We just don't do construction on that. So I don't want to say we're not interested. We are absolutely interested in it. It's just historic, his, historic hotels, historic tax credits, that's not our expertise. So we would probably at that point, you know, either hook you up with some other somebody else that does that that's developed with us before that wants to do that um so i don't want to close the door uh, but there it mm -hmm. is we 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 we'd love to be part of something like that yeah so, and historic pieces are certainly a whole, a whole new ball game but it sounds like you at least have the contacts and you know you intend to be involved with something like that so so be sure to reach out if, if there is an opportunity there um, yeah, we have one we in have, development right now. I, I, I know there's another one or two that we're working on. We're just not doing the construction piece of it. So, Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, another question that we have, and we get questions a lot about this, um, you know, this kind of this day and age, is about opportunity zones. Do you guys work within opportunity zones, or have you done a project through that, and has it been a, an impact on any of the projects that you've had? Uh, we, we have one in Ohio that is just starting now. Uh, we didn't actually set up any of the Opportunity Zone stuff, but it was done. The investors did set up their own fund, <clears throat> and then we're working on a couple other ones. That's not a primary piece for us, although it's, it's definitely a big piece. Other incentives have been bigger, a bigger component, so whether it's TIF, um, somebody throwing in the land, and it may be the municipality, and I'm just working on one in Minnesota right now where the municipality is, is giving us the land. Um, there's also PACE equity financing. Um, and then some states, Wisconsin and Nebraska, just off the top of my head, Nebraska has what's called an LB840. Uh, Wisconsin has, it's, it's called a WEDEC grant for downtown redevelopment. Um, so every, every state has some different components, but TIF or sometimes a tax abatement or um, PAYGO, that kind of thing has is, is really been primary. But definitely opportunity zones, we've had a lot of calls on it. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely getting to be a bigger deal. Right, and I guess uh, on a broader aspect, stepping back to overall incentives, um, are other pieces that I'm sure play a role in, in a lot of your development properties. Yep. Um, looking just a, a little bit more at, you know, the next step for, for you know, some of the hotels. Uh, you said, you know, I know we talked about you being a full service hoteler, but there's gotta be that, I guess, local, capital in a lot of cases for you to come in just because you guys don't like that don't do the 100 percent of it how important is it to have you know local capital willing to invest is that something that helps kind of prioritize uh, a project for you guys on your side it, it, it does so out of that i think we have we have 10 under construction right now um two of those we own as far as their company-owned projects the rest of them are investment groups some of them we might have a small piece in, some of them, you know, we don't have anything into it. One thing that, and, and we're always, we're, we're pretty upfront, we don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, we're not going to come in and tell you a big story. It's small town America, it's hard to get outside investors to come in. You might get a few, but if there's not a local investment by one city or investors or a combination of both, the project probably isn't going to happen. Because if, and again, I, I don't want to be, yeah, you know, too brash, but if if it was a, a great market, some of the big guys would have been in there. And the reason that we're different sure. is we can come in with a smaller unit count, you know, 40 to 50, where, the, you know, some of the other brands now are, are closer to 80 rooms, so it just doesn't pencil out at that number. But yes, local yeah. investment is is a big piece, and we're we're happy to sit down and um, you know, help put that group together with, you, you know, with the city, maybe a local bank, some local investors and, and package that all. And we can sit down and come in and talk hotels all day long of, of what to expect on the hotel operation. We just are not allowed to say, hey, you're going to make X amount of money. Sure, sure. And I know you're based up in, up in Wisconsin, um, but you are guys are, are a national firm. You've done projects just, you know, across the country. Our, you know, us being down in the south, based out of Mississippi, um, Tupelo, do y'all do stuff in, in our parts, you know, Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas? Are y'all looking for, for projects in those areas as well? We are, sounds kind of cheesy, we're looking everywhere. 
Uh, right now, we are under construction in New York, Ohio, Wisconsin, uh, Utah, Nebraska, Iowa. I'm missing somebody somewhere. And then we will start. We just did one in our finished one in Arkansas this year, and we are going to start another one in Newport, Arkansas. Um, and okay. Tennessee, we're going to be we're going to be starting in the next couple months. So yeah, we're not far from you. Gotcha, gotcha. I think we just have two more questions going to squeeze in here. We have we've had a sure. few questions, kind of reiterating one from earlier, talking about kind of conversions from an old school um, and things like that. It sounds like you may have some partners that if there is a project like that, maybe you know reach out and let you know and maybe evaluate that. Is that something that's fair to say? You mean I, like? I, like a community that has an existing hotel that needs a refurb and conversion, that kind of or thing? Or like they have an, like, like, uh, like an old school or an old kind of different type of large scale building, an old warehouse, uh, old something like that that could be converted into a hotel. It's kind of the trendy thing that, that we're seeing old mills be converted to apartments and hotels. Is that something that you've got some, some contacts or, or re uh, references that, that might be worth reaching out to you about? Absolutely. Now, again, that's not something we would do, but I think there's groups out there. Again, you know, is it is it just, hey, I have this old building, or is it, hey, we have this old building, there's some incentives, there might be some local investors, that kind of thing, then we can we can help you package some of that up. The only thing we would gotcha. do is the con design and construction on it. Sure. Right. But if you if there's a central property, that, you know, that has everything set up, you know, they've got a vision for a hotel, it might be worth at least touching base with you. Correct. Yep. Absolutely. And then finally, just kind of to wrap it up, just kind of a, you know, over, over branching look, you know, a lot of the, the folks that tune into our webinars uh, work with communities, municipalities, uh, DDC organizations. So, you know, if they were on here listening to this, um, you know, and they've got a, a plan for a hotel, what's kind of their first step? Do they need to, to go look at a feasibility study? Do they need to run demographics on a, on a particular site, get a site under contract? What's, you know, what's their first step walking out of the room today before Christmas to hopefully try to get the ball rolling? What, what would you kind of recommend them uh, kind of first thing to do? I would, I would say one, you know, try to identify where you think it would go. And if you think the community needs it or can, can support it, then go to the feasibility study people. When the feasibility people come in, they're going to ask, hey, where, what, what do you have available for land? So that you know, that's mm -hmm. one thing in in your mind to think if you were going to get a hotel, where would be the best fit, and then line up feasibility people because really the the banks, investors, even us. I mean, if 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 you came to us and said, hey, we want a hotel, and you have done absolutely zero homework, um, we're, we're really not we're, we're not going to be sure we want to do that without knowing <laughs> that you've done your own due yeah. diligence. So. Great. Um, so, and, and, and there, and, and, and again, depending on how you do that or who you go with, you know, that's usually fast. It's 30 to 45 days, but probably closer to 60 to, to even get that piece done. And then you can really sit down and say, hey, you know, does this make sense for us? And believe it or not, um, there are there are some feasibility studies that just, they say, hey, sorry, it, it, it's just not going to happen here. So. Right. There are some, some cold hard truth I'd imagine that do come back on, on, yep. on some of those. Correct. Well, I think we, we are right at about 40 minutes, so we went a little bit over like I thought we might, but we tried our best to, to keep it 30 minutes. Um, I do appreciate everyone for, for joining us this morning. I've got our, our emails up there on the screen. Um, please feel free to, to reach out to, to Brian or I if you have any additional questions or anything follow up. Like I said, we will get the recording of this sent out for you to, to revisit or to share. Um, Brian, thanks, thanks a bunch for, for taking time this morning to, to join me. Uh, it was a lot of fun talking about this, um, and I hope everyone enjoyed it. And if there's anything you wanted to wrap up and close with. All right. Well, thanks for having us. I, I really appreciate it. I could sit and talk hotels all day, so this is, this is easy and fun <laughs> for me. One last thing I'd like to throw out there, if you don't mind, is, is we do have a, a conference every year coming up. Uh, we, it's in March on the 22nd and 23rd in Florida. Um, if, if you're thinking about a hotel and you want something, you're creating, this is a great way to get in. We, we have a lot of municipality people that show up that have either done hotels or looking into it. We have franchisees that have gone through the development process. It's one stop to get, you know, get a lot of information. So, and, um, if you, if you let me know, I'm, I'm sure we would pick up your registration for you. So anyway, that's my, that's my shameless plug for the morning.
<laughs> there it is. Well, I'm sure somebody will probably reach out to you about that for more information. That sounds super interesting. And it's in Florida, uh, so you get to move south for a little while, enjoy the warmer winter after or warmer weather after a cold winter. I would imagine up there. Yep. Yeah, I don't need an excuse to get down to Florida this time of year. <laughs> Great. Well, well, thanks again, Brian. Um, like I said, if anyone has any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Awesome. Thank you.